Electronic fetal monitoring doesn't tell us that we have a healthy baby. It tells us about the oxygenation status of the fetus's heart and brain at a particular point in time. It is not predictive when the strip looks bad, it is only predictive when the strip looks good. The goal of electronic fetal monitoring is a healthy mom and a healthy baby. We want to maintain optimal levels of oxygenation and cause the least amount of stress. The fetal airway takes the path of mom to the uterus, to the placenta, to the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is the weakest point in the airway circuit. Contractions are like fetal oxygen obliterators. A contraction greater than 50 millimeters of mercury completely cuts off air supply to the fetus. Stressors that we encounter during labor are not using gravity, our patients are in bed laying down to deliver, epidurals which cause a decrease in blood pressure, closed glottis pushing if mom isn't breathing the fetus isn't breathing, panting which diverts blood from the fetus, and MPO status the uterus is a muscle and it needs calories to work. Our challenge as nurses is to determine the barrier to the oxygenation and fix it. In order to have oxygen delivery to the tissue of the fetus, you need a healthy, well-developed, structurally sound conduction system, cardiac muscle, and autonomic nervous system. The conduction system of the fetus, the SA node is the primary pacemaker, then there's intranodal pathways, AV node, bundles of Hiss, Kinji fibers, and the ventricles, which contract, which pushes and circulates the blood. In Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, the heart has too many pathways. Your fetus heart could also have too few pathways. There could be chambers or valves in the wrong places structurally. Fetal lungs require minimal amount of blood flow and oxygen, so they shunt to protect the brain and heart. Cardiac output needs to be affected when oxygen is low. It's hard to improve cardiac output in a fetus, so they compensate with increasing their heart rate. Fetal oxygen saturations are 35 to 45 percent. Maternal oxygen saturations at the uterine wall are approximately 50 percent. Since oxygen gets across the placenta by diffusion, high concentration to low concentration, the fetus has to be lower than 50 percent for the oxygen to come across the placenta. The fetus has mechanisms to ensure oxygen gets across the placenta. They have more red blood cells, which gives them more hemoglobin on which to carry their oxygen. They have an increased heart rate. If the heart rate is faster, then the oxygen will get to the tissues faster. And fetal hemoglobin has a higher affinity or for oxygen than the maternal hemoglobin. The umbilical cord can have several complications, and on top of that, it is compressed easily, which is what makes it the weakest link in the circuit. It could have umbilical knots. Stretching of the cord can occlude the umbilical vein entirely, which is seen in cord entanglement and prolapse cord. If the fetus has a short cord, then the baby doesn't descend, which can lead to a ruptured cord or cause a placental abruption. A lack of Wharton's jelly is also at an increased risk for cord compression and increased friability you will see an increase in variable decelerations. Lack of cord coils is also an increased risk for compression. The coils are created in the cord by fetal movement. The most common type of cord compression in labor is gradual onset and gradual release caused by contractions. Blood flows from the baby to the placenta, but not from the placenta to the baby. Remember, the umbilical vein is floppy and the umbilical arteries are stiff, so your fetus has a decreased blood volume, which causes a decreased blood pressure. This triggers a baroreceptor response, which leads to a sympathetic response and an increase in heart rate. All vessels will be occluded at the peak of the contraction, so the chemoreceptors at that point will trigger a vagal response. On your fetal strip, it'll look like an acceleration, followed by a deceleration and another acceleration. In one contraction, you can tell that you have good sympathetic, parasympathetic, baroreceptor, and chemoreceptor responses. It takes a normal umbilical cord, 75% compression for all three vessels to be occluded. Cord compression also causes variable decelerations.
The fetus physiologically compensates for hypoxia by redistributing blood through shunting. This causes a slower depletion of adenosine triphosphate and oxygen. The fetus can also use lactate and ketone bodies for energy, but they are not nearly as effective. Hypoxia is not black and white. Depending on how long a contraction is, the fetus could be going in and out of aerobic and anaerobic metabolism until the oxygen levels are less than 65% in a previously well-oxygenated 40-week fetus, you will not see anaerobic metabolism happen. But at that point, the fetus will phase in and out of it. During this time, they will build up lactic acid, use bicarbonate, have a decreased pH, and get myocardial depression, which we see as decelerations, loss of variability, and bradycardia. In chronic hypoxia, oxygen slowly diminishes over time. This can be caused by maternal diabetes, placental issues, and hypertension. A healthy fetus will compensate over time by increasing their red blood cell production, which means they have more hemoglobin so they can carry more oxygen. This baby will come out looking plethoric. If the hypoxia continues, they will progressively shunt one organ system at a time over days and weeks if needed but once this fetus becomes stressed, they will crash and burn. If there's a problem getting oxygen across the placenta, the fetus will most likely not be getting many nutrients either, so they may stop peeing, causing oligohydramnios. If this continues, the fetus will then become IUGR. In successful shunting, the fetal heart rate may be visually normal as long as the brain and heart are well oxygenated. Contractions cause fetal blood flow to stop at 50 millimeters of mercury. Fetal reserves can last for approximately one to two minutes. Vascular volume is affected by hemorrhage, anemia, and hydration. Other placental issues. Battledor, the umbilical cord implants in the edge of the placenta so there is not as much oxygen exchange. Circumvalletae, the inner ring membranes, so oxygen exchange can't get to the main part of the placenta where the umbilical cord is. Villamentous, umbilical cord attaches to the membranes instead of the placenta, there is no protection for the vessels, or vasa previa where the vessels are in front of the fetal head.